Mike Bond joined now by Curtis Blades, who will be fighting Tom Aspinall, UFC 304 for the interim heavyweight title. Uh, Curtis, first of all, congratulations, man. That's awesome news. And I want to know how you kind of found out everything, right? I'm sure, you know, you've been working so hard. You kind of put this goal there and then you finally get a call for a title fight interim undisputed. How does that feel? Uh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. And um feels great. Uh Obviously, this is what every fighter who who enters the the UFC this is this is the ultimate goal uh, to get a title shot, and it, it took me about eight years, but happy happy to finally get it. And um, I found out via my manager. He just hit me up and was like, "Yo, um, we got the fight," and I was I was like, "Okay, ready to get to work." Yeah, and the seeds for this were kind of planted before you fought Jailton Almeida. Tom Aspinall, you know, we know it's been going on with him wanting to fight Jones and that not working out, but he was like, maybe I'd look at the winner of this fight with Blades and Almeida, but that was like, you know, five months ago when he said this, and I know after you won, it came up a little bit again, but at what point do you hear, like, this is reality, it could maybe actually happen? Uh, I mean, we knew it was a possibility as far back as what's today uh i guess beginning of may because we were told um it was offered to uh gone and i guess he told them he needed time to see if he could make it work with his schedule because i guess he's doing a movie now which is that's dope but um i guess uh, they they gave him a few weeks, and he must have gave him the answer last week, and that's when I found out when he gave when he must have told him he wasn't going to be able to make it. Yeah, and you and Tom have made your thoughts on Cyril gone very clear as far as turning down fights and stuff. Uh, given everything, seemingly he's turned you down a couple times, Tom. Do you feel like you should have been the first call, anyways? Like they should have just gone straight to you over Cyril? Yeah, I do, but again, I understand. He's French. He brings over a, a lot of eyes. I get it from a business perspective, and um, it's a blessing. He said he turned down an opportunity that I don't think a lot of guys would would even dream of turning down. But that's also because he's in a unique situation. He's already received, I think, two um, interim title opportunities. So maybe from his perspective, he's like, huh. Eh, I'll get another offer in like a year or so, which he very well may be right. Yeah, I guess the pool of top guys kind of small right now. Um, we see kind of t Tom's reaction to this. He put out like a video on his YouTube channel. It was very complimentary to you. He said that you guys would probably spend a lot of time together if the circumstances were different. Yeah, he's cool uh, dude. Yeah, you kind of have the same feelings towards him as he does? Yeah, there's, there's no beef. I want to like... I don't know if I'll be able to, but I would like to disperse the negative narrative or idea that you have to hate the guy you're going to fight. I've been an athlete since I was nine. Never hated any any of my opponents. Won a lot. Football, wrestling, jujitsu, MMA. Never hated anybody. You don't have to hate somebody to physically compete and do your best to win so i know he's going to do his best to knock me out i'm doing my best to knock him out but it's there's there's no animosity behind it just that's his job that's my job yeah that's essentially what he said yeah i love the guy but it's not gonna stop me from wanting to hurt him when we get in the octagon exactly and i respect yeah, and obviously we know you guys had the beers and stuff after the last fight. Was this one, regardless of the circumstances, whether it was for this particular uh, situation or down the line, you always thought you two would probably do this again? Yeah, I figured, like you, you just alluded, the heavyweight pool isn't the deepest. So if you're good, you're probably going to fight someone else good. And he's not old. I'm not old yet. I'm a little older, but I... I knew that I would have another opportunity to fight him again. Whether or not it was for a belt, I wouldn't have been able to, to guess it. But I, I think it's a little poetic that it is for a belt.
Yeah, definitely. And when you think back to the first fight, I mean, I see people, I don't know if they're just trying to stir up conversation on like social media, but they're posting the whole first fight and they're like, Curtis was winning, like definitely. And we know it's like 15 <laughs> seconds, right? But like when you look back at that, is there anything you can even look at and be like, I was doing a little bit good there or anything at all? Immediately after the fight, as I'm like, I'm not even out of my, my, my um, uh, my shorts yet. I'm telling my coach, uh, Vinny, yo, what can we get from this fight? Nothing happened. Like I don't, I don't know what to take. It's almost like the reverse of when I fought um Ngannou the second time in uh Beijing, and he caught me in like twelve seconds just with an overhand. There's not a whole lot you can take from a fight that doesn't even last half a minute. So. No, I don't. I'm not going to be like, yeah, I was winning. Nothing had happened. He touched me. I touched him. And then he touched me again. And he hurt his knee. And you hear, you know, some people talk about Tom. They're like, he's a different fighter. He'll even say that than he was then. It's been, you know, a couple of years now. But his two fights in between that, he's had like, you know, two and a half minutes of total cage time. When you watch him from then till now, like, do you see improvements? Is there stuff you can take away from those two, like, one-minute-ish fights you had? No, there's nothing I can take from those specifically. But just based off the um, the trajectory he was heading on before his injury, you expect guys to, to always be growing. That's what I'm doing. And I know I'm good. He's good. I've been around other guys like uh, a Gaethje or a Usman or a Corey Sanhagen. Even though you may not see what they're doing in the gym, I know they're growing, so I'm just going to expect and assume, yeah, he's grown. I'm not going to think that over the past two and a half years, he hasn't added anything else in this game. He just hasn't had to use it. That's not to say he doesn't have it. I got some slick, like, jujitsu stuff, just haven't had to use it yet, you know? Yep, and he's actually got the shortest average fight time in UFC history. It's like two minutes and 10 seconds averaged all out, um, which is pretty nuts. So I guess we know it's heavyweights. There's always power. You guys are always dangerous early, but like, is he someone that you have to especially focus on early in the fight, how dangerous he can be? I mean, like you just said, that's that's the majority of heavyweights. Majority of heavyweights are looking to get in, get out. Um, So I don't... That that's not a unique like uh, hurdle or obstacle like him coming out actively and aggressive because that's exactly I take it back. It is one thing I can take from our initial fight. He came at me fast and hard, and we weren't we didn't know like is he going to be aggressive? Is he is he going to wait? And that lets him know he believes in his foot speed, his hand speed because a lot of guys. The wary to get within the range he was he was at with me when he hurt his leg. That's takedown range. A lot of guys that wary that range. He's not. So that is one thing we can take away. He believes in in his uh foot speed and athleticism enough to put himself within range of of my takedowns. Yeah, and I guess oppositely of that, with all the short fights, I mean, we know you can go 15 minutes, breeze through that. You've done 25. Um, just part of you, I am sure you'd love to get out there as quick as possible. Like, yeah. want to find out if this man can go 25 minutes hard as well? I mean, no, you don't ever want to go to decision. We always want, <laughs> we always want to finish. But like you just said, I, I know I can do it. And I'm sure he believes he, he can do it. But before I did it with um, Volkov, I didn't, you don't know until you know. Just like everyone thinks they can do MMA until you get hit. And then based off how you react, that's how you know. Mm-hmm. I started getting tired at the end of the third round. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to keep going. I did. So, so now I know I can do it. And he'll have to, to find out whether that's with, with me or with someone else. But hopefully not with me. I like to get in and get out also. 
Of course. And uh, since this was announced, of course, everyone kind of gives their analysis and stuff. And I don't know if you saw John Jones's tweet that he had this morning kind of talking about the fight in particular. If there's anyone watching who hasn't seen it, I'll just read out a little bit. He said, uh, I've seen scenarios like this time and time again, dudes prematurely drinking his own Kool-Aid. It ends up with a huge piece of humble pie. If Sergey can touch Tom, that's that easy. I'm sure Curtis can too. When Curtis decides to go, he is a lot faster than people realize. And he hits hard a few well-timed shots and a strong top game it could be a long night for old tommy boy um is that is that good he's analysis right. you think from john yeah no no he's right i can touch him because i believe in my speed and i'm i'm also i'm long i'm fast i'm i'm athletic but i'm not gonna say it's guaranteed it's it's a race heavyweight it's the hardest weight class um i don't like to gamble but i'm sure if you do like to gamble this has to be the hardest one to the gamble one, just because there's so many variables, like one one lazy overhand or one lazy jab, one one simple mistake, and it's lights out. Like what when I was fighting with Derek Lewis, I I smashed him in the first round, and I zigged when I should have I shouldn't have in the the second round when I went for that takedown. It was night night, but the other weight classes you can make a mistake like that. And like, be able to bounce back. Like, um, um, I'm just trying to think of the fight. Uh, Gaethje Holloway. Everyone expects heavyweights to be able to throw down like that. That's unrealistic because it's heavyweight, and we just hit with so much power, which means it's not a skill base. Like, you don't have to set up everything. It just be a lucky overhand or just a sloppy overhand, and because of the small gloves, they. If it connects, that's enough to put a guy away. So, like, I have no idea how it's going to go. It, it might go five rounds. It might go just a round. It really depends on the aggression. Like, if, if he comes in blitzing again, one of us is going to get hit, and it's going to be a early night. If he decides to be a little more cautious and, like, feel me out, well, there you go. It's going to be a lot longer. So, I I don't know. <laughs> I've I've already gone over the scenarios in my head over and over and over and over. It's so many ways it could go. Yeah, I know. It's it's a crazy matchup and I guess based off that though, do you feel like you have more ways to win just given the wrestling element? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if Tom's gonna come in looking at the last fight with Jilton and feeling like you can be taken down now, but um, you know, obviously you have to well, do something no. on top too. <laughs> he might like Honestly, I I do invite grappling. Like Amita was the first one to actually t- take me up on it. I am invite grappling. I'm like my grappling conditioning versus my striking conditioning. My grappling is better just because I've been doing it for way longer. The muscle memory is there. The I don't make as any errors because everyone makes errors um, with striking, and that can be dangerous with the wrestling. I don't ha- I don't really have any errors and like when you do have an error it's not like the end of the fight like with Almeida he was able to take me down eight times but didn't hit me at least once mm-hmm. and after that he was smoked and I wasn't just cuz I'm using the proper technique to get up is it's a lot more economic it's not as explosive and if anybody wants to attempt to use that game plan again that strategy of taking me down and being able to rag all me, you can do it, but I don't think you'll have the conditioning to do it again. Yeah, you dealt with it super well. And um, I know you're, you're going to get asked about this a million times leading up to the fight, um, you know, about John Jones and stuff. And I know Tom rightfully deserves all your attention here, but John did tweet, you know, Curtis versus Tom for the official number one contender fight um, or kind of contender spot. Like John Jones has been this elusive thing for so long, right? Like, and it probably never felt realistic at certain times um, for him to go out and say that. I know a lot of stuff has to happen, but like, do you allow yourself to even think if I win this, like, I could maybe actually get this fight now? No, I do not believe that fight is ever. If if I win or if Aspinall wins, I don't think John's going to fight anyone outside of Stipe. After Stipe, he walks away into the sunset. 
I just I think he likes to toss out um, different scenarios and like the what if I fought Alex Perea? What if I fought uh, Aspinall? What if I fought Blake? He just he wants people to talk about him, which I get. Like the more you get talked about, the better your following grows and that helps your sponsors. And I get it. He, and he's he's skilled at it. He's been on he's been on the internet for as long as I've had um, uh, Facebook and Instagram. He's always in uh, a presence, and he knows what he's doing. But who well, I honestly believe he would risk his uh, legacy against a guy like me. No, because if he beats me, what does that do for his legacy? Are you going to be like, oh, that was the fight that really that finally cemented John as the goat? Either you believe he's the goat already, or you don't. It's like MJ versus LeBron. If you already don't believe LeBron is the goat, there isn't anything he can do to change your mind, and vice versa. If you already believe he is the goat, there isn't anything he can do to be like, oh, he's not the guy I thought he was. However you view John Jones at this moment or after he be, he fights Stipe, that'll be the lasting image. And I don't think he's going to do anything to jeopardize that. Yeah, that's very interesting. I mean, I don't think there's too many people that could disagree. And I guess maybe some people do feel like Tom beating Tom would enhance his legacy. But if you go out some there... People do. But if you go out there and beat Tom again, I mean, who knows where that puts you or how that changes people's perspective of you. You never, like, that's one thing I do like about MMA is, like, one fight can change everyone's perspective of you forever in a good way or a bad way. But if it's a good way, that's good, obviously. So I know there's, there is um, potential. There's potential but am I going to hold my breath for a John Jones matchup? No, no. So given all that, um, do you feel like you're fighting for the real heavyweight championship on July 27th? That's how I'm viewing it. That's how I'm approaching it. Like when I told my family, my dad, my brothers, my sister, like I'm fighting for a belt. I didn't say interim belt. I said a belt. And honestly, the majority of like casual fans, they don't, they don't know the difference. I'm sure a lot of them are are probably perplexed. Like, how does Aspinall have a belt and John have a belt? They probably don't understand the concept of interim versus undisputed and yacht. They don't get and they don't care. All they see is a shiny belt and you holding it in a UFC octagon. And that's all they need. So to me, it is an intro. It is the real belt. Yeah. Do you think, um, you know, you said you think John's here right off into the sunset and you explained very well, you know, all the sponsors and stuff and things that can come with keeping yourself relevant. Uh, do you think it's going to be like a, a struggle? Like, is he going to beat oh. Steve and is he going to hold on to it like as long as he possibly can yeah. and finally retire? And it's going to yeah. be a nightmare for you. It's not going to be a smooth uh, um, transition of power. He's, he's not going to just, I, I, I know I said he's going to walk up into the sunset, but yeah, he's, I meant he's going to retire unofficially, but he's not going to officially retire for who knows. It could be a year, year and a half, however long the UFC allows him to to string it along. He'll do it. Yeah. So you'll, (laughs) you'll be ready to defend that title, but you'll feel like the real champion there and eventually just be upgraded. Yeah. That's, that's how I'm approaching it. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Okay, Curtis, I really appreciate the time. Just two last housekeeping things I wanted to ask you. Um, the time of this card, especially in the UK, is being discussed a lot. Your fight is probably going to happen at like 4.30 a.m. local time or something. Um, what are you doing to prepare for this? Are you just going to stay the entire week on the time zone you're at right now? Or how are you getting ready? How early are you going there? All those things. We're discussing those things. We haven't ironed out um, a concrete plan yet, but we're, we're discussing it because uh, this is unique. Like, I've fought overseas before. I've fought early in the morning. Like, when I fought Mark Hunt, we we were in the hotel um, lobby at, like, 9 a.m. I was fighting him by, like, 10.45, and we were back in the hotel drunk by, like, 1 in the afternoon. So we've had different, like, off schedules before. This will obviously be 
the hardest. But even when I went to Beijing, I think I fought Francis at like one in the morning. Same thing with Abu Abi when I was on that Habib versus Poirier card. Uh, I think it was two forty two. I fought and I was like the second on the main, and I fought at like one a.m. there also. So like, it's it's not an excuse. Like, is it different? Yeah. Is it a little a little off? Yeah. But we're just gonna work around it. Like, whatever we gotta do, we'll do it. We don't have a. I don't know exactly how we're gonna go about it, but I believe that we'll find the best way and we'll get it done. For sure. And just last thing, um, you've done you know everything in your career the right way, Curtis, in my opinion. You've taken your lumps, learned from them, all these sorts of things, handled yourself with a lot of class. Uh, what is it going to mean to you on July 27th to get that title wrapped around your waist? How do you think is that's going to feel for you? I have no idea. I've never won something on a scale like this. Like, obviously, in state, I mean, in high school, I won state for wrestling my senior year. That was awesome. Uh, when I was in college, um, at a JUCO college, but I won JUCO nationals. That was a pretty big thing. This will be the biggest thing as of yet. I have no idea how I feel. I mean, I know I'll be elated and euphoric, all that, all that good stuff, but I guess we'll just have to see. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's going to be awesome, man. Well, I appreciate the time and uh, best of luck with the rest of camp, and we'll see you out there. Thank you. I appreciate it.